Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to start a series entitled Next Man Up, as you can see in the thumbnail. Today's Next Man Up participant is Trent Simpson. And what we're going to do in this series is take a look at key positions that the Baltimore Ravens lost free agents or trades or whatever happened with losing guys at that position and see who the, their potential replacements are and how well did they play in any given snaps last year. So the first guy up, as you can see, is Trent Simpson. Now, Trent Simpson played mostly the week 18 game versus the Steelers. He played the second half. He only had 26 snaps that game, but was it a great 26 snaps. And I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly from Trent Simpson snaps. And we can take a look at the end and see if Trent Simpson has what it takes to be the next man up. Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. <laughs> Before we get started, I want to take this time out to shout out all the Patreon members uh, that have joined the channel on patreon.com backslash sip the tally. Uh, D Boulder, Agnes Osmond, Kevin Bodum, Roy, Chris, Swank, Bears, Paul, Bills, Vaughn, Rob, um, Mike Crawford, Big Reg, Lance, DDSQ, Living Legend, um, Yolanda B, Will G, Tyrone Tyrone, Sippy Special, Asa. Uh, Buck, Hendo, D. Weezy, Josh, um, Jose and B, Chris Arman, Mo, Alex, Jason, Bazel, and Mark. I appreciate you guys for everything that you do for the channel. And if you want to be a Patreon like these great people, go to patreon.com backslash sip the tally and see if any of those tiers fit you. But let's get into Trent Simpson. Okay, let's get into the Trent Simpson film. Now, we're going to start off with two uh, not so good plays, but I wanted to start off with these plays because they were early in his 26 snaps and he adjusted the more snaps he got. And so he started off not so good, but you'll see toward the back end that he ended up playing a lot better in the, the limited amount of snaps that he got in this game. Using his hands to get off blocks. And you'll see here, he doesn't do that. He's going to kind of, you know, the line is going to get up on him and he's just going to kind of tussle with him and not try to disengage and get off. See? He just, he just locked in on him. The, is that the guard? Yeah, the guard got him. Like He ain't using his hands to get off. The guard's kind of locked in. And he disengages at the last minute, but by then it's kind of too late. But you got to shuck that dude and get him up off you as ASAP so you can go make a play on the ball. Even if you just use your athletic ability to, to get away from him, you, you mainly got to use your hands and, and take the fight to them and don't be a catcher. Let's go to the second one. Again, another one that's, that's not so great, but you're going to see him expand on it later. All right. See that gap open up right there? You got to shoot through that, especially with his speed. Now, I understand that the, the, who's that, the center? I understand that the center is looking at him, but with the center's back turn right there, you shoot that gap right now and make it, make it be a holding call. Make it be a holding call. And he hit it just a little bit too late. You want to hit that gap and shoot right through there and, and, and maybe get a, a TFL on Najee? But he waited just to have a second too late, and the guy came off of it. The center came off, kind of blocked him up. But again, he adapted, learned from those early plays, and then started playing better. He got better and better. And this play right here, you, you know, this is where in college where I thought he was, where he excelled. Kind of in that slot role, like kind of outside the tackle box, or maybe down on the edge. I thought he played a lot better there, and this is an example of, of him doing that. Mike McDonald called somewhere. The, the guard's going to take the, um, what's that, the one tick. The tackle's going to kick slide for, J for J Jadavian Clowney, and he's kind of playing that in-between role where it looks like he's going to wall off the receiver, but he's going right now. They scheme it up well, and with, with that speed, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. To get it out of there. Because look at the pressure. Uh, I don't remember Pittsburgh's quarterback. Maybe this is Rudolph. I'm not sure. One, two. And Simpson already up on him. With that speed. And he ended up getting his first sack. First NFL sack. A lot of enthusiasm. A lot of emotion. I feel it. I feel it. But again, if he can get free, clean runs. Boy, so fast. He's going to be on the quarterback before they can even get their drops good. Again, that's his first sack. Let's go here. 
Now he's going to start playing better and doing some of those things that we talked that I talked about earlier that he didn't do. You see that? See how he used his hands to get the, the tackle up off of him? Watch. Get out of here. And now, by using his hands, now he's in the hole. Ready to make the tackle or Najee got to go a different direction. Great job of playing with his hands that time. Great job. Just slow it down real quick. Engaged. Shucked him. Still in this gap. With help coming. It's a great job. Especially it's direct opposite of what we saw in the first clip. Playing with his hands. I like the fact that he adapted well and started actually learning on the fly. Or getting better. Now this one, this is kind of like a negative one. You got to read your keys. So most of the time, not every time, most of the time linebackers read guards. This is a guard. This is a guard. But the thing is, when these guys blocking down and you get a free run, you can't always just go in there willy-nilly. Can't always go in there willy-nilly. Same thing kind of happened earlier where the, the tackle kicked out on Clowney. The guard went down on the one technique and he thinks he has a free run. But look at the other tackle coming from the backside. Got to read them keys. Got to read them. Now, I like the fact that he's triggering. Man, that jacked up. I jacked up. Now, you see this happens now. We're going to have a clip later on where it's going to be similar and he's going to see that puller coming and he's going he gonna to deliver the blow instead of taking it. Like I said, it's, every little thing that I saw him do not so good in this game, when the situation came up again, he fixed it. Which is encouraging for me, you know, that he can get in there and do what he needs to do. Now, again, him playing in space, I love him playing in space. Love him playing in space. That's him right there on y'all 22 version. Now, you see him reading the end zone coverage. Got a hook curl. So his eyes are on the initial come off. He knows he's got outside help, so he comes off of that. Playing the underneath guy, eyes on that, but now his eyes stay on the quarterback. What I, what I do like is he don't chase the cheese. He don't chase this guy or he don't drop back and, and follow, follow this guy that way. He don't check. He stay in his lane looking for looking for receivers. Now, he sticks his foot in the ground because this guy is now in his territory. They're going to dump it off to him thinking they got, you know, something in the flats. He played well with his eyes. Now, this part I like. One-on-one. -on -one, so, if he misses it, this is a big game. If he missed this tackle, it's a huge game. And, it, and Najee Harris is a big dude. Get him down. No game. No game. Playing with his eyes and then triggering once the ball was thrown. Love it. Open field tackling, too. Open field tackling. Now, this is another spot that I liked him at. At Clemson. On the edge down here. I liked him on the edge at Clemson. I liked him out in space. I didn't like him in here. I think he's getting better in here. But on the edge. And in like in like a nickel-ish type role. Or maybe splitting the difference between the um, tackle or the inman in line of scrimmage and the receiver. I love them in those situations at Clemson. Um, Venerables used him very well at those spots. But then Venerables left and went to Oklahoma. And then they put him in the box as a traditional linebacker. And he didn't have the greatest last year at Clemson. But all that's null and four right now. Now, this is the one where I told you. Like, he just went around there. And he, this time, the puller's coming. And watch him close his gap. Because if he just goes straight. If he goes straight to the running back or try to hit the mesh point. They're going to fold that thing and get right underneath him. What happened is he goes straight to the mesh point. He'll hand it off and they'll fold that thing around the back door. So what he does is when he sees, you know, the puller coming, he just goes to close that gap and close the space. So the more he closes the space, the less of a hole the running back should have. The, 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 let me see. What's the word I'm looking for? The, the more he can push this down and close it down and then keep his outside shoulder free, that forces the running back to stay inside where all the help is at. You see it coming, look at him, close it down. And now where, where Najee has to go? If he had stayed out here and took this on or went straight to that mesh point, Najee would have rolled right out this back door and been gone. But he wasn't. This is a good job. Reading your keys, recognizing, and, and, and executing. 
and still still fall in on the tackle. Get a piece of. I mean, not just still get a couple yards, but that could have been a huge game. And we'll end on this one right here. And this is just good football IQ and not chasing the cheese. The tackle's gonna try to influence them. Nope. Nope. Give me a TFA or two. Just not being influenced by the tackle. Because normally, the end man on line of scrimmage, normally the end man on line of scrimmage goes out here and fights like hell not to get hooked. And what would happen in that case if he would have did that, guy coming in motion, would have got it, stuck his foot in the ground, and scored. But he didn't. He didn't fall for the influence block. Untouched. You just go make, don't miss the tackle. Don't miss the tackle. So, you know, he's penciled in to be the starter. And just based off this second half versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, if he can get better and grow and, and just get, I ain't going to say good, get good at the little things, but because that's details for everybody. But he just got to get reps, man. And I just, just this half of football, you can see where he started off making a few little errors and, you know, just and just things he probably didn't know. He adjusted in game in less than a half. And play better throughout the rest of that half. Now, I understand, you know, some of our starters didn't play or whatnot, but that don't matter. Football is football. And he got he got good tape to to build on for this season coming up. And again, he's projected to be the starter out next to Roquan. Uh, I th still think he's going to have to earn that job fighting those other two guys, but I think he is by far the front runner. And uh, Trent Simpson is now next man up. So uh, I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love. This is Coach Evans with another video. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And I'll see y'all soon. Peace out.